There is a 0.00% chance that the 3 liter inline 6 twin turbocharged Hurricane engines will replace the 6.4 Hemi in these Ram 2500s. Yes, the standard output as well as the high output Hurricane engines are making a ton of power, but I'll tell you why they will never end up in these Ram 2500 trucks. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Alex, and this was not a video I was expecting to make, but after talking about the 6.7 Cummins gas engine, how it could potentially replace the 6.4 Hemi, a number of you guys commented that the high output Hurricane engine is going to replace the 6.4 Hemi, and I would bet my own power wagon that that is not going to happen. If you didn't catch the last two videos, the 5.7 liter Hemi as well as the 6.4 have been taken out of basically every single vehicle Fiat makes except for the HD Ram 2500 trucks. They still have the 6.4 Hemi and well it's highly speculated that this engine is also on the way out and we don't really know what they're planning on replacing it with. And that leads us into today's topic. The two main reasons why people suggested that the Hurricane engines would find their way into these HD trucks is first of all, to no one's surprise, the power numbers. But secondly, is that while Ram spent a ton of money on research and development of the Hurricane engine, and it would just make sense for them to roll it into the HD platform as well, instead of spending money to outsource an engine. The Hurricane engines like the one in this brand new 2025 down there are making a ton of power the high output's going to make 540 horsepower as well as 520 pound feet of torque which are pretty monster numbers on paper and well it does completely blow the 6.4 hemi out of the water with it only making 410 horsepower and 429 pound feet of torque so if you take that at face value it does make a little bit of sense. So with Ram and Stellantis developing the Hurricane engine in-house and the Hurricane engines making all that power, those points do carry some weight. But when we start to dig a little bit underneath the surface, we see that the Hurricane engine and the expectations of the Ram HD platform are a little bit farther apart than what it might seem. First off, the production of the Hurricane engine began in late 2021, almost four years now and if ram was going to put those engines indeed in the ram hd platform they probably would have already done so we've known now for probably three years that the 5.7 heavy was getting replaced with these inline six hurricane engines but just now in 2025 as you guys can see they're finally rolling off the assembly line i don't think ram will be waiting this long in the weeds to spring this information upon us nor would they be able to keep it a secret. Um, surely the good fellas at TFL Truck would have spotted a test vehicle with a three liter engine in it between 2021 and now. And I mean, you know, you'd think there'd maybe even be like a commercially tuned three liter engine rumored to be coming out. Not even a sniff that the, the Hurricane engines are gonna be in these HD trucks, which to me is a red flag. Let's continue on the low hanging fruit. The high octane engine has to take 91 octane. It's not recommended, it is required. Myself having worked for a couple of fleet owners back in my time, the number one priority of fleet owners is cost management and having to put 91 octane in their fleets, it's a tough sell. Usually fuel is by far the number one cost besides the actual cost of the vehicle itself. So Ram must know having to tell fleet owners, construction companies, utility, city fleets that, oh, by the way, we're gonna have to put premium fuel in these new Ram HD trucks is, in my opinion, a big no-no. You could make the argument that that smaller displacement engine isn't gonna drink as much fuel as this guzzling 6.4 Hemi. But well, we have to remind ourselves that is a twin turbocharged engine and well, an HD truck weighs usually no less than 8,000 pounds, probably a lot more when you put men and gear in it. And that's gonna result in that engine using a ton of boost, which drinks a ton of fuel and produces a ton of heat, which is gonna lead to premature wear, but getting ahead of myself already. You know what is nice on an HD engine is having 
a dipstick, something that the three liter Hurricanes engines do not have. They do not come with dipsticks. Now, myself being a heavy duty mechanic, I have never seen an HD engine, HD, come without a dipstick. HD trucks, HD engines, they're designed to tow things. And what happens when you tow? The engine naturally burns more oil. So it is very nice to have a dipstick to be able to tell a true oil reading. Yes, the Hurricane engine is gonna come with an electronic sensor, but no, no. If you're buying an $80,000 HD truck, give me a freaking dipstick. The Hurricane engine also utilizes a spray on cylinder liner. What is a cylinder liner? Well, right here we have a big cylinder liner out of a big Detroit diesel 15. And essentially this is where your piston rides up and down inside the cylinder liner. Obviously this one is very beefy because well, it was out of a big engine and this is why it's currently sitting on my cart, not in a truck. Cummins engines will use the exact same type of setup here. All the big diesel engines use cylinder liners, makes a lot of sense. So this is a cylinder liner, a spray on cylinder liner is well exactly what it kind of sounds like. Molten steel is literally sprayed onto the aluminum block to form a cylinder liner. I believe they use what's called plasma wire arc technology to do so. Um, they say it is 10 times stronger than normal steel liners, also extremely lightweight. However, it is also very, very thin. For these big girl liners, I call it a half inch, probably a little thinner down below, but you know what, instead of a big diesel engine, makes sense. So for a you know three liter engine, maybe like, I don't know, quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch, maybe a 16th of an inch, a 32nd of an inch, <laughs> not even close. From what I've read, the thickness of these spray on liners is going to be two thousandths of an inch thick. That may seem crazy, but it's really not new technology. In fact, the five liter Coyote V8 has been using that type of spray on liner since 2017. And well, they seem to be having some, some pretty decent success with it. My point here is, is that spray on liners, they're great for weight savings. Um, and while weight savings is gonna to translate to better fuel economy, but on a heavy duty engine, we should not really be concerned about weight savings. We should be concerned about rigidity, strength and reliability. And well, it just goes to show for me at least that going with spray on liners versus traditional iron or steel liners in a block shows that this engine is just really not a commercial grade engine. For example, I used to work at a school bus fleet and some of the older 6.7 Cummins diesel engines were putting out maybe 250 horsepower and like 550 pounds if you have torque, yet they hauled fully loaded school buses up and down the road almost every day for 12 years before they had to be legally taken off the road. And yes, that is a diesel engine, but the gas engines in today's heavy duty trucks are expected to perform very closely to those diesel engines. For example, GM's 6.6 .6 liter V8, the thing's rated to tow over 18,000 pounds, and it's only putting down 400 horsepower, much less than the high output Hurricane engine at 540. Power numbers on paper are fantastic, but when it comes to an HD engine and in a heavy duty truck, it comes down to workload and duty cycles. I have no doubt that this high output engine putting out 540 horsepower could tow 18,000 pounds down the road, but could it tow 18,000 pounds for 10 hours through the mountains without puking its guts out and overheating? My guess would probably be no. With the Hurricane engine only having three liters of displacement, which is a very small engine, it would have to rely so heavily on boost to tow a rather large load that it would produce a ton of heat as well. And heat is the number one killer of engines. And I think it would dramatically reduce the life of the engine. Would the water to air intercooler be able to handle all that extra boost and all that extra heat? Would the cooling system be able to handle all that extra heat? Would the oil be adequately cooled again with all that extra heat? And my guess 
would probably be no. From everything I've seen about these Hurricane engines, they are a rather light duty engine that are built to be lightweight, produce a ton of power and be rather fuel efficient. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. When put in the right application, those engines could be very, very successful. Where something like a 6.7 Cummins in an older school bus is putting out a fraction of the power of the high output Hurricane, but it comes with a much more efficient and larger air-to-air -air intercooler. It has a larger cooling system. It cools oil more efficiently. It comes with traditional iron liners. It has an iron block, iron heads. It has a gear-driven oil pump, a gear-driven timing system, an iron oil sump, all of which do not add any numbers on paper to that 6.7 Cummins, but it can most certainly perform more workload than a high output Hurricane engine. And that is the key to a heavy duty engine. Don't get me wrong, the 6.4 Hemi is not a commercial grade ISB 6.7 Cummins, but there is emphasis on the 6.4 Hemi's internal rigidity, the strength of the engine, much more than something like weight savings or fuel economy. To conclude, I think the Hurricane engines in the HD trucks is simply just the wrong application for the engine. That engine should do well in the Ram 1500s as well as the Jeeps, the Grand Wagoneers. I think that is a recipe for success if Fiat Stellantis actually made a good engine, which is still up in the air. We don't really know. There's not much real world experience on them. Let me know what you guys think. Always like reading what you have to say, especially when you tell me I'm wrong, but uh, keeps me honest. Anyways, <laughs> If you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe because we always have cool stuff planned. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you on the next freaking video.